Joining me now is Frederick Rolando. He is the president of the National Association of Letter Carriers. Mr. Rolando, good to have you with us tonight. Uh, mail carriers are out in this extreme weather while private companies like JetBlue and the aviation industry are canceling services. Uh, what does that say about the postal workers, the job that they have done in recent days, yet they're constantly under attack about privatization? Yeah, the, the, uh, thank you, Ed. Uh, it's good to be here. Uh, the Postal Service is, uh, uh, is out in the elements uh, every day in every neighborhood six days a week. Uh, and what Daryl Issa is trying to do here, uh, it, it, it undermines the ability of the Postal Service to meet the demands of, of modern shipping and, and communication, uh, demands that would instead be met by private firms that would be there for, for profit rather than for service. Uh, we, we certainly don't believe that the uh, budget should be balanced on the back of, uh, of military veterans, but the, uh, the remedy is certainly not the elimination of 80,000-some jobs uh, that offer a great opportunity to employ veterans. The uh, Postal Service is the second largest employer of veterans. Now, is, is this what the elimination of Saturday delivery would do? It would affect 80,000 veterans, you think? It would 80,000 jobs, and, and, and like I said, uh, we are the second largest employer of veterans, the Postal Service, second only to the Defense Department. But can we come to the conclusion that there would be a lot of veterans that would be affected by this? Absolutely. Okay. And, and, and Saturday delivery, what would it do to your bottom line? I mean, if you take away the pre-funding, which was mandated by the Congress back in 2006, does the Postal Service make sense financially, and does Saturday delivery contribute to that? The, the Postal Service is currently making an operational profit. There is no undisputed evidence that eliminating Saturday mail delivery would save one penny. In fact, there's evidence that it would actually cost money. Any legislation that doesn't address the pre-funding mandate is going to do nothing but attack workers and attack the service that is provided to the American people. Well, it would seem to me that the postal workers of this country in these extreme conditions need a pat on the back instead of somebody in Washington who's trying to ditch their job to come up with some kind of a scheme so they can privatize it so the private sector can make a bunch of money but yet there's no guarantee that there's going to be service every day your yes. folks have delivered the mail for lack of a better term correct correct we use no tax dollars we make an operational profit we're probably the richest broke company you're ever going to read about. We've got $50 billion put away that we have no access to in this pre-funding account. We have surpluses in both pension accounts. We have an amazing delivery network, universal delivery network, that is ripe for America's e-commerce uh, market that, that's growing every day. Yeah. And these packages and letters are delivered by the most trusted federal employees in the United States. I think we have a great future. Frederick Rolando, great to have you with us tonight, sir. I appreciate your time. You know, oftentimes we see citizens in this country go up to veterans in uniform and say, you know, I just want to thank you for what you do. I've seen people on airplanes give up their seats in first class to that guy or, or woman that has the uniform on doing what they're doing for the country. You know, it might be good right now if you were to say to your postal worker, very good chance that that is a veteran, thanks for everything you do. I know it's kind of chilly out.